Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pick a Stack Wednesday. Woohoo! I kind of feel like we're in church today. I have a stained glass panel in the background. Um, kind of makes it feel more sacred today. We've also got three beautiful crystals in the background. We've got smoky quartz, clear quartz, and a golden healer. And today we're doing something a little bit different. As you probably already noticed, you can't see the three stacks. Because today, I'm encouraging everybody to use their intuition. Instead of choosing your stack by the crystal, you're going to use your intuition. If you are new to Pick a Stack Wednesday, this is what we do. Your mission is to think of an idea, issue, or question in your life, in a loved one's life, in a, your family's life, in your community's life, in the world. And then choose either one stack, two stacks, or three stacks. So under each one of these boxes, we have two tarot cards from two different decks, one oracle card, and a crystal. And each stack tells a story and hopefully brings an answer to your question, or at least resonates with you. Today we're starting off with a little golden singing bell. This charges up the crystals, me, the cards, and everybody listening. This is a G sharp. This is really good for your heart chakra and your throat, and it just helps communication and helps you open so you can receive. All right. So let's get started. Are you excited? I'm kind of excited. <laughs> this is new. Normally you get to see the stack and the crystal, but too many people were choosing the stack based on the crystal. So we're stopping that. We're going to make you use your intuition. So if you chose stack number one, First of all, your stone is pink calcite. And pink calcite is known as the stone of the mind because it can heighten mental discernment, analysis, and can increase memory and learning abilities. It is also a stone of the heart. It's pink, so it's going to resonate with the heart chakra. So it can help you feel the true value of love and to be more generous. <clears throat> The purifying energy of calcite can cleanse stored low frequency energy from a room or a body. Use it to clear out old or stagnant energy patterns and increase personal motivation and drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little communication thing going on here. So pink calcite. So all of a sudden I'm having issues with my throat chakra. So apparently, if you're having issues with your throat chakra, you need to pay attention to stack number one. Um, I am a physical and an emotional empath, so I pick up other people's, I don't want to say issues, but things that other people are going through. So <clears throat> if you're having issues with your throat, you really need to pay attention to this. All right. If you chose stack number one, your first card is from the Spirit Song Tarot deck, and it is the Ten of Shells. Now, this is also um, known as the Ten of Water or the Ten of Cups. This is a very good card. This is um, like emotional fulfillment. This is well-being. This is, you know, you've made it. Emotional happiness, joy. And we're going to couple that from the doo -doo -doo -doo, Tarot of Dreams. And you have the Nine of Wands. So this is water and this is fire. Um, as you see in this picture, the Nine of Wands is represented by these stairs that just go up, up, up. And, and there's lights at the top of these wands. And I don't take this to, this is not a bad card. 
Um, some people are like, oh my gosh, look at it. It looks kind of scary. No, it's not scary. Red is the color of passion. It's the get or done color. Um, it's, it's emotionally charged and fueled. And, and so that's why if you're going to paint your bedroom red, you got to be really, really careful because that's a very passionate color. But these steps go up, 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 up. And um, the Ten of Wands would be the fulfillment card, just like this is the Ten of, of Shells, Ten of Water. It's fulfillment. So this is like you're almost there and you've got all your wands at the ready. You've got one in your hand and you're, the other wands are right there. They're within your reach. Like everything's within your reach to get to the top. And, and combined with this, I mean, I don't know how you could have a better combination for fulfillment. Um, you've got everything you need for tools. You've got happiness and joy and fulfillment. Um, like this is, this is heart. And so when you couple it with this pink calcite, which is a crystal of the heart, and you've got all this joy here and fulfillment and, and accomplishment, there's accomplishment here as well. Um, it's like, Law, we made it. Woohoo. Destination. Of course, you know, once you reach your destination, then you have to level up and, and you start all over and and on another journey. But this is basically the combination of you've made it. Okay, let's see what your oracle card says. And this is from the Sacred Spirit reading card deck. Well, we have a lovely owl. It's card number 28, and 2 plus 8 is 10. Take out the 0. It's a 1, so 1 is new beginnings. And it says mindful wisdom. Create inner harmony. Let's just put that right there. And let's see what card number 28 says. Wow, and I just opened the book right up to 28. Silence your inner critic. Mindfulness is a simple act of being present in each moment. But for most people, it's not always achievable during daily life. Complications of employment, relationships, children, social activities, and career choices can all seem to distract us from achieving this goal. It is only when you choose to become present that you receive clarity of consciousness, peace of mind, and objective understanding surrounding current issues. The owl is a representation of inner knowing and mindfulness patiently and carefully monitoring their surroundings, followed by clear and direct action. You may be feeling confused about people's actions, but like the owl, we must observe our surroundings to the best of our ability to see the real meaning of a person's actions or the origin of specific issues. Right now, place yourself of value. When the owl appears in your life, it encourages you to use strong intuition. That's funny because we're doing the boxes now to help you with your intuition. Use strong intuition to gain wisdom about matters that you should not ignore. More important, self-worth and confidence. Tolerance can be achieved through objectivity and inner peace. Acknowledging all of our experiences so we can be objective with our emotional and mental processes. Instead of reacting immediately out of anger, mindfulness allows you to be aware of this anger, helping you realize why you're angry and then process the circumstances surrounding this emotion. This new form of emotional intelligence allows you to physically react using a positive process and method that is beneficial to you and others while understanding the reasoning behind their behaviors. So the affirmation that comes with this, <clears throat> I react sensitively to others as I respect my personal boundaries. That's a really good one because too many times we maybe set a boundary, but we don't stand by it. So that is stack number one. Good job. You've been doing some work. And now it's the payoff. 
a better you. All right, let's do that. That was stack number one. If you chose stack number two. First of all, your stone is peacock ore or bornite. Look at that beauty. Look at it with the background. The stained glass just pops when I hold this up. So bornite is a mineral that can bring freshness and newness to your life. It stimulates the inner spirit to seek further heights and increase your ability to enjoy happiness in the moment. Let's spread this stuff everywhere. It's an excellent stone for use during activities of rebirthing, kind of like what we're going through right now. Um, it can help you release that which is no longer serving you. And it can promote insight into the aspects of grief and relief. Now, a big part of releasing that which no longer serves you is grief. Um, we hold on to things because we feel like if, if we hold on to it, it's still there. Or if we hold on to that person, they're still there. But you know what? You let them go, they're still there, but in a free form. Okay, they're not chained to you anymore. They're free and they can fly around and, and they have that feeling of being free. We have to let people go, not be chained to that emotional bond that we think is there. When we release them, we release our emotional hold on them, then we're free to truly love and be loved. So this is a stone of happiness and can assist you in recognizing that there need no, eh, sorry, there need be no deficiency in any aspect of one's life. We are the image of creation now and for all times. Very powerful. And this has a high frequency too. I love carrying this. It's a good, it has a good balance <clears throat> to it. All right, <clears throat> still trying to get rid of that frog in my throat. I don't know where that came from, stack number one. Um, if you chose stack number two, your first card is from the Spirit Song Tarot deck, and it's the Queen of Acorns. This is the Queen of Fire. Look at that beautiful sun there, and look at the graceful lines of this animal. I love this deck because the, the artwork is just amazing. Um... And I just love the graceful lines, just very, very feminine lines. Masculine lines are very straight and angular, but this is very feminine. Lots of curves, lots of curves here. The queen of acorns, queen of fire. Fire is that passion. We had some passion in stack number one. Well, now we've got passion here, <clears throat> passion and creativity. This is and it's the queen card. So it's like, she's the stage manager. She's the creator. She's the one that gets things. Hmm. She gets things done, but she is the one that helps other people get things done. Um, she's, she's not actually like, she's done it. She's already done things, but now she's at that level where, okay, I've done things and now I can help other people do things. And, um, it's not that she oversees it, but she facilitates. When I teach classes, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm facilitating. I'm not overseeing. I am facilitating. I'm helping people remember who they are, remember how to do things. Okay, so let's match that up with a card from the Tarot of Dreams. Holy cow. Talk about an affirmation. So this is the Queen of Fire or the Queen of Wands. And now from this deck, you've got the Queen of Fire or the Queen of Wands. You have the exact same card from two different decks. The odds of that are 78 times 78. Very, very small chance of getting the same card from two different decks. So um, this is your affirmation. This is you are in the queen position. Now, this does not have anything to do with masculine versus feminine, okay? The queen is like the stage manager. Um, facilitating 
the helping of other people. You have risen all the way up to this position. You've been there, done that. Now you're up in this position and you're in a, you're in a position where you can help other people based on all your wisdom and all your work experience and all your life experience. It's like you've made it. Stack number one was like a congratulations. Here's another congratulations, but now you're going to help the people. All the things that you have done and you've experienced throughout your whole life has led you up to this very moment and watching this video. And now you know that you are very powerful and you can help other people. And you're going to do it with passion, with passion. You're not just going to go through the motions. You're going to be very passionate, passionate about what you do and how you help people. So I want you to think about what, what aspects of your life do you really, 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 really love doing? Now, how can you share that with other people? If you love helping animals, how can you do that going forward? Because that's where your passion lies. And you're going to be the facilitator of that. Okay? Wow. That is I'm trying to think if we've ever had the same card from two decks. I know we've gotten close, but that's pretty cool. So then your um, Oracle card from the Sacred Spirit deck is card number 22. Now, 22 is a master number that goes right along with this Queen of Wands, Queen of Fire, um, Queen of Acorns. This is Kundalini Rising. Again, fire. Stack number two today is all about fire and passion. And it even says, ignite your passion for life right along your spine. And actually, while I'm talking, I'm getting goosebumps all the way down to my feet. So this is like super powerful today. <clears throat> Let's see what card number 22 says. Kundalini energy is non-denominational. It resides within every person, regardless of their culture, religion, or location. It's often visualized as a great snake. And this serpent of kundalini energy has been coiled around the base of the spine since birth. Awakening kundalini causes the energy to ignite and rise up through the chakras. It lights up each chakra, giving each one an energetic boost along its way, continuing towards the higher crown chakra and beyond. Rising kundalini can trigger positive and negative experiences. A spontaneous awakening can be triggered by extreme events in your personal life, such as abuse or trauma, accidents, major life events, extreme stress, or drug use. Being unprepared can leave you feeling lost in life, overwhelmed, depressed, or fearful as the body and brain struggle to comprehend its intensity choosing to restrict its movement. In a more controlled environment, yoga practice, intense energy work, and meditation can also release this potent energy. If you have a limited ego structure and are ready to surrender to your kundalini, you will pass through this experience with minimal complications. Ultimately, how you receive this awakening depends upon your outlook on life. Continual spiritual work is recommended to remove any self-restrictions you may have in your life. So currently, you are dissolving personal patterns that are no longer needed, especially with all this fire because that's burning off everything that you don't need. So if it's not serving you at the highest level, it will soon be removed. The release of kundalini energy can herald great change. Now, I... <laughs> My personal experience with the Kundalini rising, it happened while I was sleeping um, and I woke up in the middle of it and it was shortly after that that um, I realized my marriage wasn't working. So it can be, it can be a really great awakening, um, somewhat startling, but you have to remember that this is part of who we are. So... Forever changed by your experiences, reignite your fire and passion for life by connecting to your inner spark. And that's what this stack number two is all about, is reconnecting to your inner fire, your inner spark. Um, 
because we are fire. We are water, we are air, we are earth, we are spirit. We're so many things, but this fire, this is purification. This is getting stuff done. This is passion. So if you chose stack number two with your intuition, it is time to let that fire burn, baby. Your affirmation for this is, I am my own healer. I hear these messages loud and clear. I don't know how else to make it more loud and clear other than to, you know, set the set on fire here. That, my dear, is stack number two. All right, if you chose stack number three, first of all, <clears throat> your stone is smoky quartz, and it's the same as that one right there. Only this one is a lot larger. It's got some rainbows. Let's see if we can find one of those rainbows. See that rainbow? Oh, look at the rainbows on the left side of it. Beautiful. So smoky quartz, nature's stone of endurance. It can store energy, amplify it, focus it, transform it, balance it, and absorb it. Very powerful. Smoky quartz is grounding and stabilizing. It can bring calm and centeredness. It can help lift depression um, remove negativity, bring happiness. It's a good luck stone. It fits, ugh, It facilitates your ability to get things done in the practical 3D material world. It can en enhance organizational skills. So it's good to have in your workplace. Smoky quartz. This one's pretty light. This one's got some nice dark color in it. All right. If you chose stack number three, your first card is from the Spirit Song deck. And you have the Seven of Feathers. Meow. Seven of Feathers. This is also known as the Seven of Air and the Seven of Swords. This is truth. This is, you're on the right path. I feel like my, my guides are saying you're on the path of change. You're, you're right where you're supposed to be, but it's the path of change. So that whatever changes are happening in your life right now, they're supposed to be happening. Um, and, and this is your reminder for that. I have talked to so many people in the last few months that are saying, you know, my relationship is, is falling apart. Well, you know what? Maybe it's supposed to, maybe it reached its expiration date. Maybe Everything that you two were supposed to go through together, you did. But now you're on another path and that other person's on another path. And that's okay. You know, our, our grandparents and our great-grandparents were supposed to stay together forever. But that was because of survival. Well, we don't have to worry about survival as much anymore. Um... Now we can be with somebody that we want to share life experiences with. We don't have to worry necessarily about um, multiple incomes and, and all that stuff because we can do things on our own. We are, we, we're getting into that era where we know that we're powerful ourselves. We don't have to live a codependent life, I guess is what they're trying to say. So that's, um, you're, on the, you're on a path of change and you're right where you're supposed to be. Now, the next card is the um, from the Tarot of Dreams deck, and it's the Chariot. And, <laughs> you know, I love the artwork in this deck, but I also love the artwork in this deck. Totally different, but you can just see the power and the speed in this card. Um, these horses are coming out of the water, so it's emotional. Um, they're, they're going fast. You can tell they're going fast. Um, the way the wind is blowing in his hair and the horse's manes. Um, so this, this path of change that you're on, things are going to start happening very quickly. Now we're in the middle of February and I can already feel that things are 
changing and changing quickly. And this is sort of an affirmation of that. Um, so this isn't just for your personal life. This is in your community's life. This is in your family's life. This is in America. This is in all the countries of the world. There are so many changes going on right now. You may not be aware of them. Um, I hope you're not watching the mainstream media because uh, <laughs> they're not going to report on it. But there's so many things going on behind the scenes that most people are not aware of. And these changes are happening very fast. We, yesterday, um, I was hearing about 14 states right in the middle of the country without power, <clears throat> some without water, um, because all of the, the, the wind turbines and the solar fields, um, they're all covered with snow or they're frozen. <clears throat> Talk about the winds of change. I mean, that's huge. All the way down to Texas. This is the winds of change. This is things happening very quickly. And we are on a path of change. And you are on a path of change. Okay? And you just have to know that you're going to be okay. And the song that keeps coming to me is that song by Bob Marley. Um, what is it called? Three Birds? Where he sings about everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. That's the song that goes with this. So stop worrying, stop living in fear, and just sit back and um, be calm. Because when you're calm, then you're going to spread that to people around you. Okay? And that's what we need to be doing. We're on the path of change, but we need to just kind of chill. Okay? So let's see what the, the Oracle card from the Sacred Spirit deck is. And so we've got this beautiful wolf. And the sun, actually the sun, the sun and two moons. Um, card number 19, 19 reduces down to a one, new beginnings. This is the guardian card and it says guard your energy. So let's see what the book says about card number 19. Guardians of the spiritual realm are perceived differently across cultures and religions. Totem spirits angels and other shamanic spirit helpers are assigned to everyone at birth and can be discovered through vision quests, meditations, and deep forms of prayer. In ancient times, the medicinal assistance of hallucinogenic plants was used. We do not encourage you to do that, by the way. Every individual has a guardian or guarding, guiding spirit that watches over them during their lifetime. Different stages of life can bring change to those helpers depending on what lessons or guidance are needed to complete levels of soul growth for the soul's ascension. Guardian spirits are often perceived in animal forms due to the recognition of their personal characteristics and mannerisms. The wolf depicts challenges in personal boundaries and being able to trust others with your emotional vulnerability. Right now, you must guard your energy fiercely be mindful of how you feel energetically around others. Exhaustion, fatigue, confusion, and clouded judgment is possible now if you allow yourself to be influenced by these energy vampires. Only you decide on a conscious or subconscious level if you wish to interact with these toxic energies. This is why I teach people how to protect themselves. It is possible now to have interactions with police and emergency service personnel as the guardian is a protector and teacher of spirits, highlighting personal safety and the safety of others. Currently, lunar cycles are influential. Be cautious of the full moon's influence over people and places. Always put your personal safety first. Avoid taking unnecessary risks. And I'm just going to add this, that yes, we need to take um, our personal safety first, very, um, it's very important because think about being on an airplane when the oxygen level drops and those oxygen masks come down. If you have children with you, you always put yours on first because if you aren't protected, then how can you take care of other people? And so I'm always telling people, you got to make sure your cup is full and overflowing before you can share your energy and you share what overflows. You do not drain your cup. Okay. 
So use careful practice in your holistic counseling, intuitive and healing practices as you might be absorbing unwanted energy from others and you need to clear and ground yourself after each session or experience to minimize, minimize mental and physical fatigue. The affirmation that comes with this card is, I am clearly guided by my divine guardian. I am protected always. So I constantly put bubbles of protection around myself. I constantly smudge my shop and my home. I smudge everywhere I go. When I go do a workshop somewhere else, I smudge and I, I um, protect that whole space. I'm a big believer in sacred space. So I create that sacred space before I even start. And then I want to protect it while I'm doing it as well. Because I don't want energy vampires to either attach themselves to me or to suck the energy out of me. Okay? So that is your oracle card. You are on the path of change. Use your intuition on who you share your energy with. And things are happening quickly, but... You know, just chill. You've got this. Once you believe you've got it, then you've got it. It's all about having faith and believing in yourself and knowing how powerful you are. So that was stack number three. Thank you for joining me, everybody. I love you. I send you blessings of love, light, peace, joy, happiness, success, divine health, and all good things because why? Because you are worthy and you deserve them. Namaste.